Reynolds. U.S. Army veteran Douglas Bushbach is one of the team's membership managers. He has served in Afghanistan. He's from Bend, Oregon. Douglas Bushbach joins me now live from Fort McMurray. Welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you for having us, Carol. Okay. Douglas, explain to us what you've been doing there and for how long. Well, for the first few days, what we've been doing right now is uh, a lot of cleaning and decontamination of food stuffs. Uh, what we're about to get into in these next few days is a lot of debris management, debris removal, uh, heirloom retrieval, and uh, shifting a lot of the residents around the Edmonton, Fort McMurray area. How do you go about doing that? Well, uh, we have a bunch of different tools that we utilize for it. Uh, we use a lot of military veterans that are very capable in these situations, as well as civilian personnel uh, and first responders that are quite adept at uh, these types of uh, missions. Okay. And so the food, how do you decontaminate the food? <laughs> it's quite a process, especially with there being a boil water uh, notice in effect. Uh, it's just a short little three-step process where each can has to be washed with soap and water, then again with bleach and again with clean water to be able to pass inspection. Okay. Tell me about your team, Douglas. Uh, who are you and, and why do you do this? Well, Team Rubicon is a disaster response organization founded in 2010, made up uh, primarily of uh, veterans, medical personnel, first responders, and civilians. Uh, and what we do is basically, as the name implies, disaster response. Uh, we'll respond anywhere in the world and locally uh, to disasters that happen uh, because skills that we have as veterans in terms of rapid deployment, um, span of control and volunteer management, these are things that we excel at in breeding in bringing uh, order to chaos, which is what a lot of disaster situations are. And we do this because it's a passion of ours and something that we all feel very strongly about. Okay, why do you feel so strongly about it? And is it a volunteer organization? Yeah, we are strictly all volunteer organization and we feel passionate about it because uh, this is basically our family getting to be able to work with veterans again, uh, being able to be a part of people that are all um, of the same mindset. It's actually quite amazing. Um, it gives us a sense of service. It gives us an identity and a community um, as well as a purpose and a mission to be able to have these things to do each time. Yeah, looking at the pictures of you, you all seem quite young to be veterans. <laughs> well, we are, uh, but we take veterans from all aspects, all the way up to a World War II veteran. We don't have an age limit. Uh, we also take all civilians as well, too. Yeah. And as I understand it, this is also, it also helps you reintegrate after the experiences, sometimes horrific experiences of war elsewhere. It does. Uh, when you leave the military as veterans, you lose uh, a family, you, you lose a community. Um, you're so used to having your brothers and sisters with you for years and you form such a tight bond that when you leave, it is very hard to find that in the civilian world. And for me personally, uh, when I responded to Hurricane Sandy in New York, it was literally within hours like I was back home again. You're around people that have been in a lot of the same things that you've been in, uh, that feel the same way you do, and that all have a desire to be a part of something bigger than themselves and to serve and to be of service to others. And when you're around that again, it does something. It really lets you know that you're home again. Yeah. Well, I want to get back to your mission at hand. And how would you describe uh, the, the, the task itself, the job itself of actually getting those cans, actually getting that food clean for people? I mean, what kind of contamination were you running into? Uh, well, a lot of it was uh, due to the fires. A lot of it was just they were covered in ash. Um, and so what we had to do was make sure they were clean and decontaminated so that um, they could be restocked and of use to the people in the, in the area. Um, that is mainly that for that part right there. Yeah, yeah. And I uh, imagine it's an ongoing job, and especially with more people coming into the city as well. One more question before I let you go. Why are you called Team Rubicon? Uh, we're called Team Rubicon uh, because what happened is basically there's <laughs> I apologize. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, we started back in 2010 in Haiti, and we were trying to figure out how to get in Haiti with a lot of the political bureaucratic red tape. 
uh, and our organizations were able to get across the border, get it done, and we basically termed that as crossing the Rubicon, meaning as soon as we got on there, we were able to get on there and get the job done. That seems like it's your motto, get in and get the job done. Get in and get, yeah, get, in and get work done. Yes, ma'am. All right. Douglas Bushbach of Team Rubicon in Fort McMurray and getting the job done. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.